My name is Professor Mark Sutton of the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. I'm here to tell you about nitrogen. Nitrogen is this amazing thing, it's everywhere and invisible around us. 78% of every breath we take does nothing, makes the sky blue, but when it converts into all these different nitrogen compounds, it's what we need to eat, but at the same time, pollution of air, land and water. South Asia faces major challenges for nitrogen. If you look from space, you can see the ammonia levels. They're the highest level on the planet um, in the Northo Indo Gangetic Plain. The challenges include wastewater, combustion sources, and particularly agriculture. The main fertilizer used, urea, emits huge amounts of ammonia to the atmosphere, and then it's going down the rivers as nitrate pollution contributing to greenhouse gases. We're working in the South Asian Nitrogen Hub to bring all the evidence together to get the countries working together all eight countries of South Asia combining the data um, to a cooperative approach. The expertise in the South Asia Nitrogen Hub ranges from natural sciences, agricultural sciences, atmosphere, water, rivers, oceans, social science, economics. The reason for that is the Nitrogen Challenge crosses all aspects of society. It's in air, land, water, everywhere. We're only going to address the challenge if we bring it together. Look at the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Every one of them has something to do with nitrogen in it. It means if we take action on nitrogen, we can take action on making progress with the SDGs generally. The South Asia Nitrogen Hub is a super example of a regional championship for global change. Working with the South Asian champions, um, countries all together, particularly with the South Asian Cooperative Environment Programme, enables us to then come globally to work with the United Nations. We're following up the recently agreed uh, resolution on sustainable nitrogen management from the United Nations Environment Assembly. It was championed by India, worked with with our partners under the hub, and it's so illustrating how the hub working regionally with South Asia can make the connection to changing for the better for the planet. One of the big issues facing South Asia is air quality. It's some of the worst air quality. It's highly continental, huge emissions, and the wind is not so strong. It's not like Western Europe, where the air is always fresh and clean, blown away. Major problems with South Asia, air quality. But if we're going to address that and make changes, we need to get all the other wind-winds at the same time. Better water quality, uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, better climate resilience. By managing the nitrogen cycle together, we can get a hit on all these issues. South Asian countries have been among the earliest to recognize the threats posed by reactive nitrogen. They have participated in several joint research programs and signed up to several global conventions and declarations. However, the threats posed by reactive nitrogen need additional efforts to mitigate their effects and reduce their scale within, within and across borders. The policy changes the most driving forces of transformation and research program one is designed to facilitate this transition. The objective of this research program is to build the nitrogen policy arena for South Asia. It facilitates for developing of the regional and national policies by South member countries in collaboration with leading research institutions partnering with South Asia Nitrogen Hub. This would be a country-driven approach and would be supported by scientific institutions. To facilitate this, we first investigate the current policy landscape in our partnering countries. The goal is to map policies and regulations that are relevant to nitrogen reduction management, to identify where gaps may exist, as well as where policies will develop. Then, on the basis of the gaps and need analysis, and taking into account the last the latest scientific findings, future vision and scenarios for nitrogen use in South Asia will be developed. 
This research program will enhance our understanding of drivers and barriers of efficient nitrogen uses and sustainable agricultural practices. Different nutrient use practices at households, villages, and regions levels will be investigated to reveal nutrient efficient practices. Under this program, we will also develop guidelines and test effective nitrogen management software application for South Asian crop production systems, which will help policymakers and practitioners in making viable decisions. I believe this project will help South Asia to be a world leading region in addressing the challenge of nitrogen management. To succeed, we need to work together in a well-coordinated fashion at the national level as well as at a regional scale. The regional intergovernmental coordination is, however, more important because nitrogen pollution spills over across borders through air and water affecting all countries of the region. The research program 2 of South Asian Nitrogen Hub project deals with identifying solutions for increasing food production and reducing the losses of nitrogen. There are three work packages. The first work package uh, deals with identifying agronomic and genetic approaches for increasing the nitrogen use efficiency. In this, we will be identifying certain agri-management practices and crop varietal and biotechnological interventions for increasing the crop inheritance and reducing the reactive end losses. By reactive end losses, we mean that the losses of air pollutants such as ammonia, nitrogen dioxide, and nitrate leaching into the groundwaters and surface waters, and uh, reducing the emission of greenhouse gas nitrous oxide. These experiments will be carried across eight countries in the South Asian region in the most dominant cropping system of that particular region. After we have identified the solutions, these solutions will be taken to the village level and then implemented in the farmers' fields to see what are the practical and social challenges that we face in, in implementing these interventions. And the last work package deals with the uh, uh, feasibility of certain engineering approaches to capture the uh, atmospheric nitrogen. So here we would be uh, primarily focusing on the oxides of uh, nitrogen, that is nitrogen uh, uh, dioxide, and how this nitrogen dioxide can be converted into a valuable resource of fertilizer nitrogen. So the overall aim of this research package is to develop uh, effective and better nitrogen management practices for increasing the food productivity and uh, reducing the nitrogen losses that is basically increasing the resilience or maximizing the resilience of our agricultural systems in this scenario of climate change. Myself, Subodh Sarma, Professor of Environmental Science at Kathmandu University. I am also a co-lead at RP3, where Dr. Dev Rai from University of Edinburgh is the lead. Friends, South Asia has a total population of 17 billion and the population is increasing at the rate of 1.7 percent annually. What does it mean to the policymaker? That means by 2050 the population is going to double, so food security is going to be a challenge. But fortunately the data has indicated that in the last 10 years, over a decade, there has been an increase of food in the region. There has been increase of food but there also has been an increase of chemical fertilizer in the soil that has degraded the quality of the soil. So the whole objective of this project is why can't we convert a part of nitrogen which is in the atmosphere 78 percent to the soil and made it convertible from nitrogen gas to ammonia and nitrate and made it available to the soil so that we don't have to apply the chemical nitrogen fertilizer. San project has an objective of increasing this understanding and awareness to the farmers, to all the stakeholders, with three work packages. The first work package is all about identifying where on this region is the hotspot for nitrogen 
gangetic planes are considered as the world's highest when it comes to nitrogen hotspot. So we are going to consider lichen as an indicator and try to find from oak rhododendron forest. Oak rhododendron is considered as most indicative in terms of their indicator value. And second work package is all about looking at coral reefs as an indicator of eutrophication. There has been so much of nitrogen input through sewage. If we can understand this phenomenon, we can properly manage nitrogen and then prevent our coastal lines and the countries, the partner countries along the coastal line. And third objective is all about nitrogen education and that will be made available online for training purpose. Friends, uh, the nitrogen initiatives has indicated that nitrogen is a threat in terms of deteriorating water quality, air quality, influencing greenhouse gas and also ecosystem services and then biodiversity. But now the time has come when we will have to make our society aware that it is not only a threat but this could also be an opportunity. Nitrogen cycling plays a very important role in the South Asian region. The, uh, nit the South Asian population is about 1.7 billion and it is increasing about 1.7 percent per year and by 2050 we will be doubling our population. That means more food production, more fossil fuel consumption in the South Asia region. For example, the fertilizer consumption will be almost doubled by 2050. So we, we need to have a better nitrogen management for the South Asia region. Uh, for example, India spends nearly $7 billion per year uh, for fertilizer subsidy. Uh, but when you look at uh, the pollution cost, either due to climate impact or due to ecosystem degradation, uh, it is uh, nearly about $75 billion per year. So there is a huge amount of uh, nitrogen pollution which is happening in this part of the region. So as a part of the SANA project, uh, the RP4 uh, look at the uh, modeling aspect on a regional scale, uh, both terrestrial as well as the atmospheric, as well as the marine uh, modeling. Uh, looking at the both spatial and temporal variations. There are four different work packages. The work package one looks at the uh, data harmonization from different aspects and then come up with the regional scale model and then as well as the country level nitrogen budget. The work package two look at the atmospheric modeling and the uh, measurement of uh, uh, ammonia as well as uh, NOx uh, using some mass spec uh, as well as the other parameters and then try to integrate between the atmospheric modeling and the actual measurement data. Similarly, the satellite uh, data which uh, has been uh, used uh, for the NOx and NO2 emissions uh, is been compared uh, with the actual, uh, for example, endogenetic plane data uh, in the foothills as well as in the, up to the elevation level. The work package 3 uh, looks at the uh, combination of the soil, the hydrological model, the coastal and the marine modeling uh, in order to look at the coastal upwelling as well as the eutrophication and other aspects. And work package 4 uh, is mainly looks at uh, the nitrous oxide emissions as well as the other greenhouse gas emissions and also try to look at the health aspects and then simulate what are the differences which is happening. So this four four work packages is uh, try to interlink between the other RP as well as the work packages.